Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jason with Longbottom Farm, and today we're gonna to talk about cold storage solutions for your small farm. Had me at hello, tier, nothing. Yeah. Are you a small farmer struggling to keep track of your inventory? We've been there. Are you tired of losing track of cuts or discovering cuts that you didn't even know you had that you could have sold, but have just been sitting in your freezer? Look what I found. What if you have beef, pork, chicken coming back from the processor and you're thinking, how am I going to divide, store, and, and inventory all this? Well, we've got you covered. In this video, we're going to share five essential tips that we've used for mastering inventory management specifically tailored to your farm. focus on chest freezers. In part two, we'll go over the spreadsheet that we use and how it, in conjunction with our chest freezers, will save you time, money, and headaches. Get ready to revolutionize your cold storage management and take your inventory control to the next level. Also, as a bonus, you'll want to stay to the end of this video where we're going to talk about all the solutions for cold storage management and how we've incorporated that into preparing for our farmer's market. That's what I'm talking about! This could save you time and money and make market morning a whole lot easier. Let's get into it. So why use chest freezers? I'd love to have a walk-in, trust me, but one, they're expensive. Two, we're pretty rural, as are a lot of farms, and sometimes that makes it a little scary to have a walk-in in case it goes down and having someone to get out here in time to work on it. And three, especially getting started with a small farm, it's not the first thing you need. That doesn't mean we don't want it. Um, chest freezers are perfect for cold storage and taking care of whatever meat that you're producing on the farm. Once you scale, yep, go for it. But for now, if you're small or just getting started, chest freezers are a great solution. They're tried and true, and we're going to go into why. So, number one, they're inexpensive. You can find these chest freezers on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. Those are probably the best two sources we've found for finding them. We have bought, I believe, one new when we first started, and once we realized how cheap they were on these other sites, that's what we went for. If only I had known sooner! We typically pay between $50 and $150 per chest freeze. We found small four foot cubic freezers and we found all the way up to the huge commercial freezers, anywhere from 50 to 150 bucks. Again, you'll see them more expensive, but be patient, shop around a little bit, and you'll see these things all over the place. So farms require a lot of upfront cost. You've got animals, you've got fencing, you've got waters, you've got trailers, you've got processing costs, you've got insurance, you've got, you name it, it's just a lot of a lot of cost to get a farm started and when you can take an inexpensive solution like chest freezers for cold storage cold storage is one of the main things you're going to need if you're producing beef pork chicken lamb and so chest freezers are definitely the way to go here save money tried and true reliable and for 50 to 100 bucks you just can't beat it again facebook marketplace and craigslist are the best sources we found for finding these number two these freezers are customizable they can save you a ton of time once you've got it set up like you want it you can set these freezers up to suit your needs, meaning you can put your beef freezers together, you can put your pork freezers together here, and kind of have everything separated so it just makes life a lot easier when you're trying to find that cut you're looking for. You do you. Now we've got a number of freezers that we've acquired over the years, so we'll actually divide ours up into, say for beef, we'll have the front roast in one freezer, we'll have the back half roast in another freezer, we'll have steaks and ground in another freezer, we'll have ribs in a freezer, we'll have the offal, uh, suet and bones in another freezer and this really makes it super easy when orders come in I know exactly where I can go to find what I need. In the next video when we talk about the spreadsheet that we use you'll even be able to color coordinate your spreadsheet to your freezers. Stay tuned for that. All right number three is something that we started using with our freezers and that's bags. We use these color-coded bags. You get them off Amazon. There's a link below that you can see those. And this allows us, now that we've got our chest freezers divided up, we can actually make divisions within the chest freezers. So say, for instance, we had a freezer that has our steaks and ground beef. Well, I can have ground beef in a bag, ground beef in another bag, and then I can have another bag of just ribeyes, another bag of just New York strips. And the cool thing is these bags come in colors. Like we use black for steaks. Uh, we use red for ground beef. We use the same color bags for the same cuts. And over time, you just know that way you open the freezer, bam, you recognize the color, and it just makes the process flow a lot more smoothly when you know exactly where to find what. Also, a really important thing if you're selling beef, pork, chicken is what they say, first in, first out. What that means is that if you got an animal processed six months ago, 
you don't want those cuts sitting in there while you're selling cuts from an animal processed three months ago because those cuts are getting older and older. You always want to sell your oldest cuts first and keep your stock rotating. This is a good way just to prevent waste and to ensure freshness of your product. Frozen foods can be safe indefinitely, but their quality will degrade over time. By using these bags, we have a system now where we have all of our older cuts in one bag versus our newer cuts be on the bottom under those cuts. And that's a way that we can keep first in and first out going. Number four, these chest freezers we found are safe for our farm. And in doing that, they save us money. We've talked about a walk-in and our scale is getting up there. I think we have 19 chest freezers at the moment. But the thing about chest freezers is that if the power goes out, uh, we have generators, uh, portable generators that I can plug, say, three or four freezers into one generator, run it for about four hours, and switch to another one. And I can do that indefinitely and keep all my freezers running during a power outage. Problem solved. Again, we're pretty rural, and our concern with the chest uh, walk-in freezer is that if that was to go down, well, a lot of times when that goes down, it's because power's out or there's some weather event, something's going on. And that means a lot of other people are down. And that means you might not be first on the list. You might not be second or third. Having tons of meat in a walk-in, at least from our perspective, was just a little concerning. And the fact that we could use chest freezers and accomplish the same goal for cheaper. And in an instance where the power does go down, we can use generators to keep them going. Also, if one of them goes down, then we can easily, with the bags, shift them out into another freezer. So there's a lot of safety factors that for us just makes us sleep better at night. We know that if power goes down, we can keep our meat frozen. We know that if one of the freezers itself goes down, we have other freezers as backups that we can put the meat into. And we just think in the long run, it's gonna save us money and give us a huge peace of mind. For a little added peace of mind, we actually use a product called Sensor Push. Uh, they're small little monitors that go in our freezers and monitor our temperature. Uh, it sends a signal straight to my phone, works on Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. If you're using Bluetooth, you can just walk by, refresh, and it'll refresh all your temperatures. So at a glance, you can see all of your freezers and what their temperatures are. If you're on Wi-Fi, then it'll pick up pretty much anywhere in the world. So you look at your phone, as long as you got internet, and it'll tell you what your freezer temperatures are. As an added bonus, you can actually set a max temp. So we set our temp at 22. If those freezers reach 22 degrees, it's gonna send me an alarm saying, hey, freezer number three is reading 22 degrees. And then I know I can either watch it. Obviously they fluctuate sometimes. Uh, we try to keep ours as close to zero as we can, but this is a way to keep track so that a freezer doesn't go down and we miss it and lose a bunch of meat. So just something to think about. Again, there is a little cost involved with this, but it's one of those things that if you've ever had a freezer go down with a lot of meat in it, which we have, um, you'll realize real quick that it's one of those purchases that, again, will get you peace of mind and save you money in the long run. All right, number five, uh, final tip, and then we'll get to the bonus, is that these chest freezers help to improve our order flow. Does that mean more money? No. Yes. Maybe. Uh, we run a website, and on the website we have curbside pickup where customers can order meat on our website, and then we set a date and a time where they just pick up uh, from coolers at our farm. Uh, we also have local delivery that we do every Friday, and then we also have pre-orders where people can pre-order on the website, and then we'll have it ready for them at the farmer's market. A lot of weeks we have a lot of orders that will come in at one time. Um, usually it's like Wednesday or Thursday before deadlines for the market or deadline before curbside pickup or delivery. And so having the chest freezers set out, divided, and allotted to specific cuts, and then also having the bags in, which then further subdivide everything, it makes it really easy when an order does come in to get the cuts that you need, bundle them up. And then we have a separate freezer that we actually use for our order freezer, and that's where the finished orders will go. Putting together one or two cuts can be pretty simple, but when you get bigger a bundle order, and we even have some smaller share orders that we do, putting those together can take some time. So again, having the freezers assigned to specific cuts and then also having the color-coded bags within the freezer makes it really easy to go in, get the cuts we need, get out, and get the order packed up and ready to go. We also use these special bags if you're interested for our larger orders. It makes it easier to put into coolers for people to pick up. You can find these on Amazon as well. I believe they priced out to about 60 cent a bag, which wasn't bad. And again, it kind of gives your product a more professional touch. A lot of times when people are buying grass-fed, uh, pasture-raised, these are premium products and you want them to have a premium look. So we found that these bags kind of give them a little premium look and make it easier for the customer to get their product from you.
So, okay, and I told you if you stayed at the end, there would be a little bonus. Uh, this is our little bonus as far as if you do farmer's markets or you're actually taking your product from your farm to somewhere else to sell it, is we have a specific freezer that is just set for farmer's market. And within that freezer, there are, again, color-coded bags. Thursday or Friday, prior to the market day, is we will pack those bags with all the cuts that we need. Uh, we look at our spreadsheet, and things are color-coded on our spreadsheet. Uh, more on that in our next video. And then we can see at a glance what we need for the farmer's market and what we're out of. We stock those into the specific colored bags and then come market morning, your bags are already stacked. So you have your cooler set up right outside of your freezer. Open the freezer, bags just go straight into the cooler already packed. Cooler goes on the truck and literally we can be ready in about 20 minutes. Done and done. It's something that we found when we used to do markets prior to this strategy, we would get up probably two hours before we had to leave and we would be packing bags, figuring out what cuts we need. And it just, that's pure chaos. That could break reality. You know, farmer's market's a long day. You know, there's a number of hours on the front end and on the back end, not to mention just the market itself. So when you can find ways to efficiently take care of that front end and back end easier, this is it. Um, when we get back from market, we simply unload the coolers, open them up, bags come straight out and into the freezer. Coolers just set there and we're done. We can literally unload coolers and all the meat and everything in it, usually in about 10 minutes. Uh, it takes no time at all. So it's really cut down on that back end and that front end time that we've had to spend. And when you can cut down on time and labor, well, that's technically money back in your profit and that's saving your farm money. We also have a separate freezer that we keep our ice packs in. These are for the farmer's market. Uh, we put our items in our coolers and then these iced blankets go over top of the product and just help to keep it cold, uh, colder longer. You can find a link down to these below. Uh, they come in these nice long sheets and you can actually cut them to fit your cooler size. We usually put one on the bottom, one on the top. Uh, we use these for years at the farmer's market and they work great. All right, guys. Well, always, I hope this helps your farm some. Again, there's a ton of different ways to do this. There's walk-ins. Again, there's there's a lot of ways to do this. This is just, um, we've been doing this now for about seven years, and this is how we've kind of evolved our system, uh, trying to take out the inefficiencies and make things more efficient. Again, when you're saving time, you're saving money. That's time that you can use to market. That's time that you can use to do other things on your farm. And this is one of those huge things that, one, is important because this is where your income's coming from. But two, it also can be very time consuming if you don't have a system down that allows you to be efficient uh, with your cold storage and knowing where your cuts are to help you pack your orders and, and do what you need to do to get your product out there. So give it a try. Um, if you have a different way you do it, please share down below. Um, again, we're always looking for things, ways to do things better. And part of this video is we wanna share what we're doing that will hopefully help your farm. And you know, even if you just get one little thing from this, that's one thing that helps your farm be better. And at the same time, you know, we hope other farms see this and share with us what they're doing so that it may help us uh, grow and become more profitable as a farm as well. So thanks for watching to the end. If you made it this far, um, there'll be another video coming here in about a week or so. And we're going to go over the spreadsheet that we use, um, how that's set up and how that in conjunction with the freezers can really save you a lot of time on the farm. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. All right. Bye.